Hi everyone, in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to track scroll depth. Scroll depth is a popular metric that allows you to see how much of your site or app someone has viewed. It does have some difficulties though, as users have different size screens and it's difficult to know when exactly to capture the scroll depth metric. But I'll be going through setting all this up in this video. Let's get started. So to track scroll depth, we're going to need to have an app to track. So to do this, we're going to run npx create next app. We're going to be using next.js at latest, and then we're going to name it scroll. And we won't use TypeScript. We'll choose the default for a bunch of these. We'll choose the app router and then just the default for that one as well. And this is going to create some files and install some packages here. Once that's done, the next thing we're going to want to do is go into the app folder and we're going to create a new folder called big. And in this big folder, we're going to create a file called page.js. And this page.js file is going to be the one we scroll through. It's going to be a big page that takes a bit of scrolling. And yeah, so it's going to be kind of our example page. So it's going to be a function component and it's just going to have a div style here, const div style. And this is going to have a height of 500 pixels. It's going to have a background color of green and a margin bottom of 50 pixels. And then we're going to close that out there. And then we're going to return a component here. So this is just going to be one big component. We're going to make sure we know it's on this page. So big page. And then we're going to return a few divs here. So div, div style, and then first, second, third. And that's then we're going to add a link at the end. So. This link is going to go to the home page. Going to get rid of that a tag, and then we're just going to save this, and we're going to go set up Postdoc. So I have a new Postdoc instance here. We're going to add a snippet to our code. We're going to scroll down and choose the JavaScript library. We'll just copy this piece of code here that has the import and then the initialization with the project API key and API host. And we'll go back to our Next.js app here. And we're going to create a new file inside our app folder called providers.js. And in here, we're going to paste in our code. And then we're also going to import posthog provider. And this is from posthog.js slash react. And we're going to do a check if. And the check is going to be. If type of window is undefined, then we don't run this. Or yeah, basically, if the type of window is not undefined, then we can run this. And we're going to export default function ph provider. And this is going to take children and then return a component that's just a postdoc provider with the children. So importantly, we need to add use client on the top of this so it runs in the React client. And then we're going to go to our layout.js file. We'll import providers from dot slash providers. And then we will wrap this component in our provider. And we will run the server and you'll see it all working. So we'll do that and then we'll go into our scroll page. We'll make sure we install our scroll folder and we'll make sure we install postdoc.js down here. So now we have postdoc.js installed as well and we can run npm dev. And then we can go to localhost 3000. We'll see the base next page. When we go to the big route, we'll get a big page basically that has a home link at the very bottom here. 
and we'll get some events in our post hog instance. So you see, we set events successfully here. So that's post hog and the Next.js app all set up. So there is a few ways we can capture scroll depth. One of them is to capture it on scroll, but that would lead to a massive amount of events because there's tons of scroll events that get fired by the browser. We could do a custom event on a router. When you start a router change, then we capture the scroll depth, or we could do on unload and use the page leave event we could write a custom page leave event basically that captures more details about scroll depth. And that's what we're going to choose here. So to do this, we're going to slightly change our post hog initialization. And we're going to say capture page leave is going to now equal false because we're going to write a custom page leave function here. And then we're going to write a couple of event handlers in our ph provider component that handle for the page leave and scroll depth tracking. So to do this, first, we're going to set up some constants for our max percentage and max pixel. So we're going to use ref here, and that's going to be zero. And that reminds me, we need to make sure we import use ref and also use effect from React. So we want both percentage and pixels because on different size screens, they may be different pixel sizes, but generally the content stays roughly the same percentage wise. So if you make it 50% down the page, on most screens, you'll probably see about 50% of the content, where if you scroll maybe 100 pixels on one and 500 pixels on the other, you could also see 50% of the content. So we're going to have both because why not? Then we're going to write our function. So our first function is going to be the handle scroll function. And this function is going to check the last percentage. So last percentage equals math dot min one. And then we'll check the window dot inner height plus the window.page y offset, and then we'll divide it by the document body offset height. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll get the last pixels. So const last pixels equals window.inner height plus window.page page y offset. And then we will use if last percentage is greater than max current max current percentage, we'll set the max current percentage to last percentage. And we'll do the same thing for if last pixels is greater than the max pixels current, then we'll set the max pixels current to the last pixels current. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a page leave handler. So our second one here, a second function is going to be const handle page leave. And this one's going to capture an event. So post hog dot capture page leave. So we use the dollar sign to override the or this represents kind of a post hog event that we auto capture. But since we're turning page leave off, we can use this ourselves. And then we're going to write a bunch of properties here. So max scroll percentage equals max scroll percentage current, max scroll pixels equals max pixels current, last scroll percentage is this value. So we're just going to copy this here. And then last scroll pixels, same thing. We're going to make sure we add a comma here and a comma here. And then scrolled. So we'll check if we fully scrolled the page. And that's going to be max or, or sorry, scrolled at all, basically. And this is going to be max pixels dot current is bigger than zero. And then we'll close that out. And what we have to do to get both of these functions to run is we have to wrap them in a use effect. So we're going to bump these over both of these over one to wrap them in the use effect. 
And then we're going to add them both as event listeners. So we're going to go window dot add event listener. And then on scroll, we're going to handle scroll. And we're going to, before unload here, we're going to handle the page leaf. When the value returns, we're going to remove both of these event listeners. And then we're going to close out that use effect. And that's all we need to do here. So that was a lot. We set up the handling of the scrolls to calculate the max pixels and the last percentages. So this gets us our max values for our scroll depth. And then we created a way to capture the scroll depth using the page leave event with a bunch of properties. We set both of them as event listeners. So when the scroll browser event happens, we handle scroll. When the before unload browser event happens, we handle page leave, which captures the event. And then we unload those event listeners as well. So we can save all of this. And if we've done this correctly, when we go back to our localhost 3000 page, we can scroll around and click home. It also works on home, but we can't really scroll much here. We can go back to our localhost 3000. We can scroll and we can go back and forth here to get some page leave events. And we'll next go to our postdoc instance to do some analysis on these. So in our postdoc instance, you'll see we have a bunch of new events here. We have some page leave events. And if we click hide postdoc properties, you see all of the properties we have here. So we have our last scroll pixels, our last scroll percentage, our max scroll pixels, and our max scroll percentage. So that's our custom page leave event working well. We have kind of the scroll depth here. This is for the big page. And for the other page, we can check this as well. So we didn't scroll at all here. And the scroll percentage was just 100% because we didn't scroll at all. So now we have some events here and we can create some insights from them. The first insight we might wanna create is we're going to take the page leave event here and then we're going to use property value average and we're going to get the max scroll percentage. So this will get our average max scroll percentage across our, all of these events. And when we choose number here, we get a 0 0.62. We can use formula mode to multiply by 100 and that gives us a percentage or we can also change the unit here to percentage zero to one. So now we have a percentage here that gives us an average value. We have 100% on one of the page so we can also filter this by current URL and this we want big so we'll do this and we can see okay we have an 82% average scroll depth on our big page. We can also change this back to a bar value chart. We can add a breakdown by current URL so we can compare the different values. So you'll see the average max scroll depth for the big page was 82% while it was 0% for the default page. We can do a similar thing for all of our values here. So we'll delete this one and we can instead look at max scroll pixels broken down. We don't want percentage anymore. We just want the value. So you'll see that the max scroll average for the normal page is zero, while the big page it's 1400. The last insight we can set up is we can check the pages that actually have been scrolled. So we can use the scrolled filter property here. So we can do this and we can just check true. And we'll see that only the big page has true events here. So those are some different insights you can use using the scroll depth metrics we tracked. I'm sure there's a lot more and it depends on what you're looking for, but this gives you some ideas. So that was all for this tutorial on how to track scroll depth. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this and check out postdoc.com slash tutorials for this tutorial and more. Thanks for watching.